My whipped cream's deflating. Ah, there it goes. Oh, it's just running out. Okay. different style of DIY video. This is my new series of DIY projects for the Sabbaths, starting with Yule, of course, as you're seeing this uh, a few days before Yule proper, but in spite of it being a little early, happy Yule. I'm gonna be making a recipe for each of the Sabbaths, and I think I'm gonna do two rounds of it, just to kind of get in the swing of things with the first section of them, and then once I have the hang of it, I'll do a secondary recipe for each one for next circle. We're starting with Yule today, and I'm gonna be making eggnog from scratch from an old recipe, I think from the 1890s. I'm basing my attempt here off of the video that B. Dylan Harris did over on his, he initially did it on TikTok, but I think the video is also on YouTube. So I will link to his video below so that if you wanna follow his or see his version, you have that at your disposal. But I have quick notes of how the recipe is supposed to work here on my phone in my note app. And so I'm just gonna be going through the recipe and as I'm going through various of the steps and you're watching the process, I will also have some voiceover of the specific correspondences of the various ingredients going into the eggnog and why this sort of beverage works as a way to celebrate Yule and Christmas and all of the intentions and meanings behind the celebration. So, but if you want to follow along, you will need one cup of sugar for the main portion and some more sugar to mix with the egg whites for a second half of the mix. I'm not sure how much you need for essentially making what it, what is a meringue. I will do some looking and figure out how much you need, but you need at least a cup of sugar, five eggs, nutmeg to taste. It says four cloves. I'm gonna put a little more because I like clove. About a cup of heavy cream. This can also technically be heavy whipping cream, which is most likely what you're gonna find in the store. You can also substitute half and half or probably other forms of dairy. I would just do some looking online to see how much of those other forms you need in order to properly substitute the amount and style that is called for. Two cups of milk. I am using a combination of whole and reduced fat because that's what I had. Some vanilla extract to taste and cinnamon to taste as well. I've got my saucepan over on the stove waiting, but yeah, I'm gonna figure out how much sugar is recommended for the latter portion of this and then we'll get started. All right, I think I might've said his name incorrectly. It's B. Dylan Hollis. I think I said Harris, whoops. But also he says just a touch of sugar for whipping the egg whites. So we'll figure that out when we get to it. We're gonna start with separating our eggs and mixing the first cup of sugar in with the yolks. Yes, with the yolks. And there are a bunch of different methods for separating your whites and your yolks from each other. I happen to have a spoon that is specifically designed for this. So if you can find a spoon like this, I would recommend it. It makes it so much easier than having to find an empty plastic bottle or doing it with your hands. You don't get it all over your hands. I'm gonna crack and twist and just gently drop that in there. And the white will just sort of do the work on its own to slip off of the yolk. You can see it's hanging down and I've already got most of it down in the bowl there. It looks like a tiny bit of shell fell in there, but I'll worry about fishing that out in a minute. Give that a jiggle until the rest of that sloughs off. I'm actually gonna get a spoon out to help with this. Eggs are widely considered one of the most powerful ingredients to use in the kitchen as symbols of the sun, fertility, abundance, beginnings, renewal, rebirth, and even eternity. And the shells are commonly used for protection rituals. It still takes a little work to do it, but it's a little easier than having to have egg yolk and egg white all over your hands for the sake of separating them. So I'm gonna get the rest of these cracked and then we'll mix in the sugar. Have these separated, I'm going to add the cup of sugar 
to the yolks and get that whisked together. Sugar is associated with lust, attraction, and abundance, and along with other similar ingredients such as honey, is often used in workings to sweeten the deal, so to speak, and manifest better, more favorable results. It's also associated with Venus and Aphrodite. yolks and the sugar whisked together. I've got them over here along with my cinnamon clove, heavy whipping cream, and milk. What we're gonna do with the milk and the cream is bring it to a scald. You don't want it boiling, just scald. So I'm gonna keep my burner at about a medium low heat. So we're going to add the milk and the cream to the pan. Get my burner going here. Milk in all its forms is a symbol of fertility, abundance, prosperity, beauty, cleansing, and renewal. It's also commonly associated, naturally, with motherhood and is associated with the moon, Venus, or Mercury. And I am using cage tree pasteurized eggs. I think it's, is it Eggland's Best? Yeah, it's Eggland's Best, but use whatever eggs you prefer. And then I've got Kleinpeter milk and heavy whipping cream because it's a local company, I just prefer it. But again, use whichever you prefer, it doesn't really matter. Get that a stir to get those incorporated. And while this is going, I do also want to, I guess, apologize for any dim lighting in here. The overhead light, of course, on this side of the kitchen has gone out recently and we haven't had the chance to replace the bulbs. So hopefully this will be better lit for future recipes. But we're doing the best we can. I have, I have my ring light. I've got this light here. I'm lit well enough for you guys for now. And when you have any sort of dairy on the stove for any reason, do not leave it unattended. It's actually such a well-known culinary rule that it's become a thing in any kitchen, regardless of what you're doing, that if you don't have time to stop and talk with the other cooks, like if you're running to grab an ingredient and head back to what you're doing, just say milk on the stove. And that's the, so that's the universal language for people who work in kitchens of, okay, I'll leave you alone then. <laughs> you go do what you need to do. <laughs> At least from what I've heard. I'm gonna transfer my yolks to the bigger bowl because I'm gonna to need to take about half of this and slowly add it to the yolk to temper the egg before adding the whole mixture into the pot. I should have started with the bigger bowl to begin with, but this is a common mistake for me. <laughs> Beside which, this bowl is plastic and I do not wanna be pouring scalding milk into a plastic bowl. I almost forgot, and I'm glad I realized now, it hasn't quite scalded yet, but you're also supposed to add the cinnamon and the clove for this. So I'm gonna do a sprinkling of cinnamon, just enough to coat the top, and I'll tip out enough cloves to fit the palm of my hand and dump those in there as well. Cinnamon is associated with success, healing, power, lust, protection, and love, as well as Venus, while clove is believed to have powers of protection, cleansing, love, and money and is associated with Jupiter. About that much in the way of cloves. And I've got about that much cinnamon. But of course there's no hard fast rule when it comes to this sort of thing, especially flavors in cooking and baking. So if you really like cinnamon and you want more than even I've put in here, go for it. If you don't like cinnamon or would rather use something else that's kind of similar, um, there's allspice, nutmeg, which is called for later on in the recipe. You could do just clove. It's it's totally up to you what you do spice-wise here. I'm just showing you what I'm doing and telling you what the recipe calls for. Oh, it smells heavenly now that I added the spices. It's just starting to bubble. So I'm gonna give it one more stir and then I'm gonna use the ladle to carefully transfer a portion of what's in here up to half into the eggs to temper them and get that mixed in. And then we'll transfer the egg mixture back into the pot. Basically what you're doing here by tempering the eggs and adding a bit of the hot mixture into the cold egg as opposed to just adding the cold egg into the hot mixture is you're warming the eggs up slowly so that they don't cook because if you were to add this scrambled egg yolk into that you would just get scrambled egg. I'm gonna drop my heat down so that the milk doesn't continue to cook too far. Now that this is fairly well incorporated I'm going to slowly add the egg back into the pot. 
and have your other hand ready to stir as you do this. The sugar is going to melt in and sweeten it, and the egg will be incorporated to give it more body without scrambling and turning into a clumpy mess. Oh, this smells so good. All right, we're gonna keep this over low heat until it's very thick. Take it off the heat, strain it, and set it aside. So I'll strain it back into this glass bowl, and then we'll move on to our egg yolks. Or egg whites, excuse me. <laughs> this is what it looks like after tempering the eggs and adding them into the saucepan. And I'll show you what it looks like once it is thick, which it's already getting there. It does not take long. All right, I know this isn't the best angle, but it's more important that you see what I'm doing rather than see me. I think my egg is starting to get a little bit clumpy, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it and strain it into here. The strainer will catch any clumps as well as the cloves, and then we'll set this aside and work on the egg whites. slow so you don't splatter anywhere, especially not yourself. There's definitely scrambled egg in here. That's okay. It's only my first time doing it. Essentially what you're doing here is making a custard. I have transferred the yolks to a larger bowl and I'm gonna get my sugar jar open. I've got the same spoon. I'm going to do one spoonful of the sugar just for now. Start whisking and we're supposed to whisk until it forms stiff peaks, which I'm choosing to do by hand for various reasons. But obviously if you have a stand mixer that or a, an electric hand mixer, that will go a lot faster and be a lot easier. I'm just doing this by hand because I'm nuts. One of the fun things about whisking meringue is you can have fun with the rest of the family, see how many people you can get to take turns before you get where you go if you do it by hand. But this consistency here on the whisk is about what we wanted. So now I'm gonna grab the other mixture and we're gonna fold it in. We've got both of our bowls now. This one is still very, very warm. So I'm gonna, to, like I said, just fold very gently. I'm actually gonna grab my wooden spoon for this. When working magic into your cooking, your spoon is essentially your wand. And I prefer to use a wooden spoon when I can because I believe that an old wooden spoon has more good energy and power from all the love and recipes made with it before than a plastic spoon could ever have. And the reason for the terminology fold, you quite literally are going slow and gentle to incorporate the two because you don't want to knock all of the air out of the meringue that you just whipped. And the recipe says to finish with vanilla and nutmeg. I'm gonna go ahead and add my vanilla now so it incorporates. Vanilla is used for love, lust, and mental power and is associated with Venus. That's probably more than enough. It is widely believed that the direction you stir makes a difference when cooking with magical intention. Clockwise is for manifesting, counterclockwise is for banishing. So now it's all folded together. My mixture is a little thicker than Dylan's was, but that's okay. It still looks lovely. So I am going to portion some of this out into a mug, top with some whipped cream and some nutmeg, and give it a taste. <laughs> Nutmeg is associated with luck, money, health, fidelity, and Jupiter. Just a light sprinkling, and I'm gonna sprinkle some over the top of this as well. And that way, once it gets transferred and put in the fridge to keep, that will incorporate in there. But obviously, if people wanna top it with nutmeg, you can also, I probably would've topped it with cinnamon if there wasn't already cinnamon in there. Old Spice is also a fabulous, fabulous flavor for this time of year. But here is my finished cup. That's obviously all just whipped cream, but there's a go. Mm. Oh, that's so good. And like, I don't normally drink eggnog, but that is so good. 
and with a little bit of practice to get the consistency right and avoid some of the egg curdling in the pot, especially if it were warmer, but this is kind of a gnat hanging around. <laughs> this is this is very good. I highly recommend this. Like I said, I'll link to his video so y'all can see that in the descriptive tome below. And you may also want to look up the actual recipe that he uses. I think he explains which one it was. He says it's from 1895, so if you just Google 1895 eggnog recipe, you'll probably find it. But yeah, so I'm gonna put the rest of it in the fridge to keep, either in a pitcher or a very large Tupperware. I need to figure out how I'm gonna keep it because we have a lot in our fridge right now. There you have it, eggnog for Yule. I'm very proud of having made it. I know it's not perfect, especially because I didn't practice this beforehand. I just grabbed all the ingredients and went for it. But I'm really happy with the result. In spite of the mistakes I made, it still turned out perfectly. I'm happy with it. I think this is a great start to this series. Let me know if y'all have any ideas what I should make in this vein for in bulk in February. Let me know in the comments. I haven't decided if I'm gonna stick strictly with drink recipes or just do whatever comes up. And if you decide to make this yourself, if you enjoyed this video, send it to Dylan to see what he thinks. And if you try making this, send me the pictures, videos, show me your results and let me know how you like it. I will also say technically because of the egg white stuff, you are consuming raw egg, but if you don't want to have the raw egg component, you can throw it back on the stove for a few minutes to technically cook the rest of the egg through before you serve. I'm consuming it raw because as I said earlier in the video, I buy pasteurized eggs, so I trust that I am not going to get sick from these eggs, and if I do, it was my own fault because I consumed raw egg. But you can obviously do as you feel safe doing. This is also a non-alcoholic recipe. I wanted to do it non-alcoholic for my first go, just to make sure I had the recipe right. But if you wanted it alcoholic, I would say after incorporating these, you could pick your favorite whiskey, bourbon, amaretto would probably go really, really nice, some sort of dark liquor or liqueur a dark spirit basically with a flavor that would complement what's already in there anything that goes well with the cinnamon the clove the nutmeg and goes well in creamy drinks because some alcohols will curdle the cream you might be able to do well with a spiced rum people who know alcohol will have better suggestions if you know what would go well leave that in the comments as well um i will probably try in the future with a dark rum or or a bourbon or amaretto because amaretto tastes like almond, so that would go perfectly with all these other flavors, but yeah. Thank y'all so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, you know where. Actually, you know what? It's Yule, fresh start. We're gonna say it for these couple of Yule videos and then I won't say it for the rest of next year. If you liked the video, make sure to click like and if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos as they post, make sure to click subscribe and click that notification bell to turn on all notifications. If you wanna see more content like this video specifically, I have my DIY playlist linked in the cards and in the description below where you can find all of the reads that I made for the Sabbaths two years ago, as well as a few small sewing projects I've done here and there. If you want more witchy content as well, I have a bunch of tarot readings and I will be doing tarot readings for Yule this year. Those will post on Yule proper on the 21st of December, which will also start up our Yule vlog series where I will be filming a video every day from the 21st of December through the 5th of November, which is my birthday. And so if I can keep up with myself, you will see a video a day from the 22nd through the 6th. If you enjoy hanging out with me and coming along on my adventures and want to see what else I'm up to on other social media planes, my link tree is also in the description below where you can find my Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and my Patreon. Speaking of, I'd like to give a huge thankful shout out to my coven of patrons who continue to be the most pivotal in helping this content be bigger and better every time. If you would like to join their ranks, check below for the Patreon pledges start at $1 a month. And $5 and up patrons get extra privileges, like being able to vote on things like what games I play on Twitch. Something to consider. Stay tuned, as I said, for the Yule Tara readings, as well as my Yule vlog series. And I'll see y'all again very soon. Keep it, my loves. Mwah! Slauncha. Happy Yule. And um, stay tuned. You can tell these aren't scripted. The link tree in the description for the Patreon. Bramble. Thank you.